du Oskar Sand in uh, Småland. Have you heard of Småland before? It's, it's uh, re the region where we are situated. So I will tell you a little bit about uh, Oskar Sand, uh, the place where you are right now. Hello everyone! I have been waiting and waiting and waiting to have a chance to talk to you! <laughs> because that's the only way I can exchange information for me and for me to get to know Thank you, Vaclav. I was named Tommy by my parents and I'm still my name, it's still my name, Tommy Claesson. Uh, and I, uh, I'm a geologist uh, and I'm, I will try to, to tell you something yeah. about... So, uh, uh, I would like to focus on plutonium, but actually I could have also discussed, I mean, the uh, thorium uranium-233, uh, but I, I, I will really focus on plutonium. Today we have more than 6,000 tons of spent nuclear fuel in this munici municipality. And it's not something that people worry about in Oskarshamn. It's... also that for in the beginning. So what we do with this here is that they, what one tries to do is to find the weakness zones or weakness, possible weaknesses in the crust and then we try to find those because for building... A fractures? <laughs> and then we have these fractures. Is it okay? Yes, and they are crossing then. Huh? And they are crossing. Yeah, we have these fractures and then we have these and then they just go in this kind of crossing direction. And then we have the other ones that goes out here and up abrupt the all these long fractures. Thank you. If you are for instance inviting the women working in the local hospital, of course there are men working there as well, but it's mostly women, then we have break in one hundred years. As the public, who can I trust? So what do we do then? Of course, we have a meeting about it. We invite people, and, and we have even had um, uh, the guy that says that. The, the Heyday to give you an idea of the scope 
and size of the facility in New York. Now then, in 1980, Congress directed the U.S. DOE to We just pile it all in, in one big piece and then some scientists probably have some fun there. Um, to be honest, this is much, much more different. And uh, today's meeting, first one is just to bring you the basic idea of how this will happen. So we would like to um, speak about some questions. Welcome to Oskarshamn, Espö and Nova, and I hope you will enjoy your visit here, learn a lot, and of course that you will come back to this unique environment.
First, the reactor core, as you all know, after some time of operation, has a huge inventory of radioactive isotopes, which might be released in the case of accident. Uh, it's Don't a great pleasure for me to uh, to be invited to Which share with you nice. on some information nice about nuclear power program so in China pleased. and in the gas cooled reactor technology development. Now, I'm going to give you a, a history of what 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 and why um yes and then of course we will end everything up and i hope we can have a little bit of discussion towards the end and that you have loads of questions for me uh, so i will start here as much information as you want yeah, so I would like to thank you all for coming out today, and we've accepted questions from the panel, so we will now be accepting questions also from the public. And thank you to Anna Karlsson from SKB for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any questions from the we are here today to introduce you shortly the concept of a nuclear waste repository, but first, let me introduce our members again. These are my colleagues. We have Otto, Marek, Shoma, Olaf, and myself, my name is Joel. So we would like to answer a few basic questions you might have regarding this repository. For example, why do we need to have this repository? What is it exactly? Why we chose your community? And what's in it for you? And I would like to encourage everybody just to ask further questions uh, after the presentation.
my name is Tomasz Kozlowski. I'm from the University of Illinois. We are at a beautiful camp Gunnarsho in Oskarshamn, Sweden. Uh, we are here at a geological waste disposal course organized by KTH and SKB. SKB is a Swedish nuclear waste company uh, in cooperation with Linus University and other institutions from US and China. We have a large group of very international students from all over the Europe, most of the uh, nuclear countries in Europe, France, Spain, Finland, Lithuania, Russia, uh, England, and also from Asia, from uh, India, China, and North America. Um, this course is one of the uh, best waste disposal courses. We cover not only technical aspects, which are very important, but perhaps even more importantly, social aspects of waste disposal, uh, the public acceptance, the policy making, which are a huge obstacle in most of the countries uh, to deal with the nuclear waste. I'm from Singapore. This is my first time in Oskarshamn in Sweden. I'm here uh, this week to talk about public perception of nuclear energy in Southeast Asia. Um, I think this summer course is really well organized and um, because there are a lot of international, internationally well-known scholars from all over the world uh, who would share their experience and their knowledge on nuclear energy. Uh, the topics could range from uranium, the use of uranium and plutonium in the making of nuclear energy as well as uh, the geological sighting of the spent nuclear fuel as well as uh, social aspects of nuclear energy. So that's why I think it's really fascinating. Uh, it's really an interesting course because uh, the course instructors will also bring you out to the, the, the nuclear physical nuclear power plants where you get to see uh, how uh, the operational side of things. Uh, that I think you cannot get from the textbooks and I think it's really uh, a cool idea to get to the ground. Uh, last, but, uh, last but not least, I think uh, it's really cool uh, for students who are really interested in a career in uh, nuclear energy. But at the same time, if you are interested in this topic as well, I think this is a good summer camp for you. My name is Olga Maskenska and I'm a teacher at the summer school and I'm responsible for the part, for the geological part and we do some excursions both underground and over the ground and teach students the history of the geology, uh, some rocks, fractures and this course is adapted to the not geological students, so the students that doesn't have a geological background.
Hello, uh, my name is Edyta Weszkowska. I come from Poland. I am a material engineer and currently I'm working at the National Center for Nuclear Research in Warsaw, um, Poland. Uh, that's why I decided to take part uh, at the summer course in Oskarsham in Sweden. I think that being here as a participant of the course is not only a great opportunity to reinforce knowledge in the nuclear engineering field, but also is a great chance to meet people from all over the world. Hello, my name is Remigius Janulonis. I came from Lithuania. I'm uh, work, actually working and studying in Lithuanian Energy Institute. I'm a PhD student and I found this course actually related to my is studies in the in the institute. Hi, I'm Alec. I'm from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and I'm studying nuclear plasma and radiological engineering. Uh, I took this course because I wanted to get a better understanding of the total nuclear life cycle, uh, specifically the back end of it, which uh, Sweden presents a great opportunity to learn about. I do like very much uh, the lectures actually, the, the teachers are great and uh, I found very interesting the geology side of, of the nu spent nuclear. Uh, nuclear. Okay. Hi, I'm Anna and I'm from Poland, like Renata. It's a great opportunity to us to meet uh, new people comes from all over the world. Also, it's a really big chance to us to learn from specialists from Europe, Asia and United States of America. And for me, I am new to, to Europe and when we came to Stockholm, Sweden, we tried very nice food that was very delicious. And to show you... What oh, yes! <laughs> we did it! We did it! The society and they may they maybe can if they just accept the, the nuclear and they can have some influence on their family who also answer these things I have an example for you to understand why we are interested to be in this area you see here you can see Oscar Sam we are, it is uh, uh, we, uh, a small the second assignment we would like to talk a little bit about situation in <coughs> our yes. countries so the potential to use the Swedish system in the U.S., uh, the primary obstacle obviously is just the political situation. It's, there's just...
4.6 million years and 4 minutes and that means that one millimeter is one million years. from the previous one so basically we we have the orientation of this one uh, the speed is a little bit different so the speed would be so it's quite different it's a uh, strike it's not uh, wait, it's here you can see it's not as vertical so it's like this it's around 45 degrees so it's like half of the previous this one. strike this is Elina's uh, so I'm showing if you see on the map it's exactly pointing north, so these fractures have zero degrees when it comes to north and uh, 60 degrees in uh, deep, like if you see, it's quite steep but not like vertical like the previous one. It's not that hard to also identify it because it's like a lot of area. Deep angle is like that. Steep is like this, strike uh, is like this and uh, it's zero because they're all in a region and we call it um, the great professor William Roy. Okay, so far. started to uh, the, all the research for the yes, vertical one. So uh, basically the idea is that uh, Finland is yes, buying the idea the, but please. maybe oh, moving a little bit further to do some more research and work. But they're learning from the uh, mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. uh, the benefits of uh, li living a life and bringing a better life for our children. And uh, as we said, um, oh, yeah. in the center, we're supposed to already have that. We are group number eight, and so our presentation will have uh, three parts. So, first part, uh, it is uh, meeting with the uh, stakeholders of public. So, first of all, we would like to emphasize the main rules before the meeting with the communities. So, first, 
we need to understand that we should start to work with public and all the stakeholders as well. perspective from other parts except from Sweden or Europe as for example China or US which is really interesting and it's something new that we don't get to see uh, every day of course the field trips were really interesting and uh, the fun activities that we had besides the courses they were really interesting as well and uh, in general I would say it's a really nice course to participate in it's a really unique opportunity that you should definitely not miss and also can I add something more and also uh, I want to say that uh, fuel cycle workshop was so nice in this year I think it was new uh, thing right so that was so nice I I can say that you guys should take this course not as an elective it's uh, it should be a compulsory course for a MENA program it's such a beautiful course not because you know for anything else <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you Uh, during this summer course, uh, we have oh, really? uh, large opportunities for geological mapping, for measuring, to hear more about the technical process for the creation of deep geological repository. Also, it has always been my dr dream uh, to visit underground research laboratory in Sweden, because it is very important not just know about it theoretically, but see it in practical, to touch this. And uh, especially for the people of uh, University of Illinois, we will be given uh, four credits for just 10-day course, which you will definitely learn much more about. Uh, and that's something that I really do enjoy and this is a easy course and it's a tech elective and plus you get to have like an international study abroad experience which all the satisfactions do meet for a good study abroad experience. How do you like Oscar Sham? Oscar Sham, I live in a cabin with four... This on? It's gone, yeah. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Roberto Ferhurst. Um, I am originally from Argentina, but currently I am doing my, my master slash PhD in uh, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champagne. Um, I came here as part of a class organized by uh, UFI um, with uh, KTH. Um, the name of the class there at UFI.
av studenterna som är här det är Elina Charazido. Hon är från Grekland, pluggar på KTH i Stockholm. Elina, how is the course? So it's far. really it's really interesting. It's really uh, new. It's something that we haven't done before. I think it's unique when it comes to this master's program. Something, as uh, the teacher said as well, we have students from all over the countries and it's not only from KTH. And it's really interesting to actually see the work that is being done because it's not only important to use the nuclear energy, but it's also important to take action and responsibility for the ways that we have created. Det är inte bara viktigt att man lär sig om det här avfallet utan man måste faktiskt också lära sig hur man tar hand om det. Det är mycket fokus på förändringar. Elina, what's your dream about being like a nuclear engineer? Um, I would say that my dream is uh, to use nuclear energy without producing any kind of waste. Aha. Is that possible? I mean, we are working towards that, so I hope so. Yeah!